watching Thrifty Kniffy. Hello everyone and welcome to Thrifty Kniffy. Well today we're going to be taking a look at another knife in the Rough Rider Spade series. This is the black Appaloosa coloring. Of course you got that Spades logo there, the RI spelling on Rough Rider. On the front of the box we have that tang stamp, the 30th anniversary Rough Rider tang stamp with their slogan, always high quality handmade pocket knives. On the back we have the website information. And then on the bottom, the country of origin, China, the cancer warning. And we're looking at model number RR2487. And of course, with all these boxes, we have the magnetic style close and the felt line cutout and the bag that the knife came in. There's again, the RI spelling on that logo at the top of the box. All right, so let's get into the knife. We've got a three and five eighths inch design here with the closed length. Again, those Appaloosa black handles and nickel silver bolsters on either end, they're equal ended. This is called an equal end swell center jack. And you've got a blade at either end here. And you can see the difference in the amount of space left on that secondary blade. So we'll kind of look at that in a moment, talk more about that. But you got the threaded bolsters on either end really attractive kind of the like exact same size that nice swell in the middle for that swell center style handle the black appaloosa is just a white smooth bone with the black dye now they've added brown in there i don't know if that's coming on through the camera but you can just see it here that's more prominent just a touch of brown dye on the the show side of this handle on the back you're not really seeing that i don't see any of the uh the brownish color on the handle. Now, I don't remember seeing that on the Coke bottle either. It was much more like this. So why I've gotten the uh, the brown on there now before I didn't, I'm not sure. But in any case, it still looks nice. It's just a little bit surprised to find that on here. Again, we got the really nice bolsters on here, and they have good fit and finish across here. Not feeling any stepping from the handle to the the bolsters. We got the black underliners, stainless, or not sorry, not stainless, but nickel silver pins, and then also the nickel silver shield. Of course, that spade shield is really nice, like that inlay, and just a really nice design on uh, on this handle. Feels good across all the edges, so very comfortable. No uh, rough edges on this one either. No stepping, not really feeling the pins, and just really just kind of feel the thread there. That's about the only thing you feel. On the bottom, we've got stainless steel springs with those brass liners and the black underliners. And I'm not uh, seeing any gaps on this, so that looks very good. Fit and finish is very good. Also, you know, when you've got that angular design with like a swell center or some of these other knives that have like a pronounced angle on the spring. Sometimes they kind of have a tendency to kind of be angled one way or the other where they don't grind it evenly. This looks good in that respect. So I appreciate that very much. So very good fit and finish on this. And uh, so let's take a look at the blades. So we've got the two blades. The main blade being the clip point blade. And that, of course, is on the right side of the handle. We've got a measure of to the tang just slightly over two and three quarter inches let's call that two and five eighths and then the cutting edge is just shy of two and a half well eh, yeah just shy of two and a half good action on the blade we got half stops here and uh call that about a seven i think on the pull i'll shut up in a minute and let you guys listen And yeah, that, that's got some good action. Now, I've tested this for blade wrap. I've let it close pretty harshly a number of times, and I'm not getting any any blade wrap like that on there. I know some of you guys get on me about, oh, well, don't close your knife like that. I understand. I've tested ahead of time to make sure that it's not it got any blade wrap. And if it does, then, you know, I'll just close it more gently or, you know, try to let you guys know that I'm having that problem. But yeah, not having that issue with this. Got very good lockup, very confident in the hand. Four finger grip. Fits in my hand pretty nicely there. A lot of body to the knife, so you do get a really good grip. Secondary blade does come up a little bit, but I'm not feeling really a hot spot, even with a really firm grip. 
And I feel like this is probably a better knife for long-term use than the Coke bottle. I found that one to be a little uncomfortable, uh, you know, with a firm grip. This one, not so much. This one feels quite a bit better in the hand. I don't really feel that uh, secondary blade poking into my, my fingers. So probably a little better work knife than the, uh, the Coke bottle was. Look at you get some really nice stainless steel blades here. 440A stainless. Good blade edge on that side. There's the swedge. And the nickel. I'm sorry, the match strike pull. There's a look at the profile of that. Now if we look at the other side, how well does that match? I'd say it does match pretty well. Now it's a little thin down here compared to up here. And I'd say overall that when that side is a little more even across the length of it. But it's not horrible. And I feel like you get a pretty decent geometry on the blade there. Maybe just a slight touch up on one side to kind of even it out. But not too bad. Now if we look at the tank stamp, we got that 30th anniversary design here. See if I can get a better look at that. There we go. So it says 30 and then Rough Rider. And they're going to be on all of these Spade Series knives. On the back, we've got 440A designation for the stainless steel. Then below that, the model number, which is RR. Oh, you're going to make me look at the number, aren't you? 2487. Yeah, my eyes are just starting to cooperate right now. Yeah, RR2487. And then below that, it says China. I don't know if I can kind of... Pull it out there so you guys can see that, but it is written there somewhere below the model number, but pretty tough to see because the bolster kind of hides it. So, yeah, really happy with that main blade. I think it's a really attractive clip point blade. Got a lot of body to it. I see that being a very useful blade. Our secondary blade, sort of a, uh, I guess a coping blade, you call it. It's a little bit of a weird shape to it. It has a little bit of a cant. You can see that comes down slightly. But you got the nice stainless steel on it as well with the mirror finish. Looks like to be a pretty nice cutting edge on that side. And I'd say that's pretty even on both sides. Nice little point on there so you can do some puncturing. But I find that to be very comfortable as well. Long term use, not really feeling the, uh, the main blade there. So for comfortability, this definitely wins over the Coke bottle. I can see this blade being used for like some really, you know, more detailed tasks, a little whittling going on here. And it uh, looks like there's just a little bit of a bend to the the blade edge. So it's not perfectly flat like a normal coping blade might be. You do have a little bit of a bow to it. So that might help with, uh, you know, some draw cuts. Getting the blade all the way down. So, yeah, good design there. I just think maybe it's a little short, maybe, for the handle size. Maybe would have liked to have seen a little longer blade there. Well, that's a minor gripe. I mean, that's still a pretty decent size blade for uh, a secondary. So we have total length on that. Yeah, so you can kind of see it's, it's about one and three quarter inches total to the tang and only about one and a half cutting edge. But, yeah. I, I think I probably would have preferred just a slightly larger, maybe by about a quarter of an inch, you know, longer blade. But it's it's usable, and, you know, it's probably just a design choice. Something they decided to, to kind of play with, uh, you know, the traditional sizes of these things. Kind of give it a little unique flavor. And uh, overall, still pretty cool little blade. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this knife. Um, I think, again, it's probably just a little better user than the Coke bottle was. Uh, a little interesting about the, the coloring of the handle. Not sure why they've gone with that, but they have. But uh, overall, again, really high quality knife for what you're paying. Again, it's about $17 and change. And uh, I think that it's just a supreme value. This whole series has been fantastic in terms of what you're getting for the money. Really well built knives with fit and finish that are just phenomenal. Really nice looking handles and the design choices are pretty reasonable. Really nice clip point blade and then you have that nice clip 
our little coping blade that I think would be very good for smaller tasks. Got the nice tip on it and has that little bit of a belly to it for uh, more versatility. But uh, overall, really good knife. Uh, I think that uh, it's a winner. So if you're interested in this series, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to pick this one up. Uh, go, go ahead and get this one as long as well as the uh, Coke bottle. But that's going to do it for my review, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell to be made aware of videos when they drop. We'll see you next time. Take care.